Ladies, thank you for being here with us today. We'll get to hear about you in just a second. Uh, as I mentioned, today is week three of our fellowship series. And just as a quick overview of what we've been going through, uh, uh, week one, we spoke about the levels of fellowship. That's right, the different levels. Say with me, levels, levels. of fellowship. And um, we said, and I, I remember starting this, you and I are created to love God. Can anybody agree with that? Amen. Like, we are created to love God, and the way we do that is what we call worship. And worship is not just singing and applauding. Worship is a lifestyle. Amen. It's me dedicating everything to God. It's me allowing God to fill the space that only God can, can have in my life and leave all the idols aside and, and worship God. That's how I love God. But then also in life, we have believed that we are called to love others. And the way we do that is through fellowship. So I love God through worship, and I love others through fellowship. And there are different levels of fellowship. The, the first level, which we uh, went a little bit deeper with Andres and Erica last week, um, thank you, uh, is the level of sharing together. Say with me, sharing together. Sharing together. And we learned that there is two ways of sharing one, with one another. And one is through experience. Say to the person next to you, experience. Experience. And the second way that we can share with one another is through support, is being there for one another when time is in need. And uh, it's amazing, uh, through Erica and Andres, we heard some beautiful stories about how sharing together impact their lives and solidify their faith in Jesus. Because if there's somebody interested in our lives for us to have fellowship, is Jesus. Because our fellowship has the power to strengthen our faith. And Jesus showcased fellowship at the end of the day. So I want to live like Jesus. And Jesus was the first one who created the fellowship of the cross. Hello! I just made that up, okay? If you know what I'm saying. Fel even <coughs> Fellowship of the ring. Fellowship. That's a super bad joke, actually. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyways, but the second... The, he started it. He started it. The second level of fellowship, uh, which one that we will elaborate a little bit is is the the level of belonging together the fellowship of belonging together or being part of is not me only sharing with you it's me being with you at a place where we belong and obviously the fellowship of of um uh, of belonging we can display we can see a display at our family of course there's there's no option we gotta we gotta fellowship through it and yet there's so much toxicity in our families today that fellowship at some of our houses have been broken, but God wants to restore that fellowship through healthy approach of relationship that starts with sharing. That's the beginning. That's the entry point, right? Uh, and uh, it's beautiful because today we'll elaborate a little bit on that. So the third level is the, the fellowship of serving together. Just like as Leo was mentioning today in the generosity, together we can do more. Mother Teresa is, I think, the most famous person for saying that. A lot of people have said that. But there's strength in numbers. Like, we can do so much more when we are together. And I love that we are part of a community that believes that and puts action to that understanding. We can do more if we're stronger and we're closer in unity together. And the, the fourth level is a pretty interesting level because uh, it's, maybe it's not the most famous level out there, but it's, it's the fellowship of suffering together. It is, there is something in... in the approach of pain in our lives. By nature, we repel pain. That's just a reality. We don't like pain. But we have understood that pain is just part of life. And through pain is how we grow. And it's incredible how you and I can get together through that pain and, and, and through that suffering and just grow tighter and tighter together. There is something beautiful like suffering pulls us in together. It really does. And there's something beautiful that happens within the pain that we realize that as we are connected in fellowship, we're not alone. That what I am going through, I don't have to go through it alone if I don't choose to. And uh, today we are going to get to talk about the fellowship of belonging together. And uh, this is uh, Maria Cotin, uh, a.k.a. Mary Good, Mary, Good. Mary Bueno, Ornanda. <laughs> uh, Ornanda. And uh, you have changed many, 
You haven't changed your last name? No, no. It's okay. Oh Steph so I'm still Maria either. Bueno. Okay. Steph hasn't changed <laughs> it either way, so it doesn't, it's fine. It's fine out there. Uh, and Mary, uh, before we introduce Catherine, can you really quick introduce yourself? Uh, how long you've been part of this community? And we'll oh, get... Oh, not a very long time. Yeah. Since 2007. So whatever number that is. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a lot of years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was right out of high school. I worked here for like yeah. six years, yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, I took Holy your job, like not the pastor job, the the, the administration uh, job. Assistant, yeah, assistant, I remember that. yes. Oh my yes. God, I didn't remember that. <laughs> I did. Okay, <laughs> to yeah. my resume. So, <laughs> it, no, but yes. Yeah, so I've been part of this community for a long time. Um, I yeah, since high school, I have learned so much here. There was a time, I think during like my college years, that I got a little bit disconnected. But you know, disconnected people always come back home. Uh, so, <laughs> and say and that. that not only did I came home, but I came home um, pregnant with a husband, right? Well, with a husband and pregnant, yeah, yeah. not not the other way around, <laughs> but not. Yeah, <laughs> but however you come, it's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and and here we are with my husband, the one that I was that I'm matching this morning. Uh, we're, we we serve here. We love it here. We serve with the middle schoolers. Um, we, I think I've always served with that age group. Yeah, sure. With you before when I started, I think I had youth group at your house. Mm -hmm. So um, I truly believe in a fellowship and belonging and calling a place home. I think that it's so important in our journey with Christ. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank, wow. thank you. Thank you, Nanda. Appreciate that. Uh, Catherine, please introduce yourself and, and well, it's all about you. Where do you want to start? <laughs> well, I've been here since the beginning. In 2000, we started. It was before you, before you. But anyway, but I'm not that old, you know? <laughs> It's just been, it's my home. I cannot, um, like when you think about family, family is given by God. Yeah. So you don't even think, it's like you can put your family aside from you. Regardless of the circumstances or the changes or the other processes that, you, that we all go through. But community is that for me. I mean, so I see like Mary Good. My daughter was in middle school when she was her leader with Martin, and I remember we were the drivers for the kids, we had snacks, <laughs> we had all that we could so that the kids could get in. So now seeing them, yeah. like um, I was crying, when, <laughs> when Leo was crying, I was crying there, because I see so many faces that started when they were very young, yeah. and I see what has, the transformation that happened in my life and the life of my family throughout the 20 years that I've been here. Yeah. So I, my heart is full of great. I'm just so thankful for being here. Thank you for the opportunity, Pastor. Of course, thank you. Give it up for them, please. That's awesome. And so, I'm part of the staff as well. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, this is our, our, our main text for today, and yeah. I want us to dig in a little bit. But uh, the Bible is full of fellowship. <laughs> that sounded interesting. Uh, it, it, it really is. We find the theme of fellowship all over, really, uh, uh, the Word of God. And um, I think one of the best people we can learn fellowship from is the Apostle Paul. And um, I want to read this, our text today, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we're going to read from 19 to 22. Uh, it says the following. It says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Verse 20 says, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophet, prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, ver verse 21, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22 closes and says, in him you also are being built together into a dwelling plays for God by the Spirit. And just super, super tiny context, but really uh, Paul is addressing uh, uh, this church in Ephesus because, uh, well, he's not there anymore, by the way, when he's writing. Uh, he's writing to them very particular, by the way, again, for context. He's in jail, okay? Uh, he's in jail at this time of his life, uh, and then he's writing these letters uh, to these people that he've been to. But it's very interesting because 
the visit of Paul to Ephesus wasn't really the nicest thing, okay? There was a lot of Greek uh, uh, religion stuck into the culture, uh, and when, when Paul started preaching the gospel of freedom and Jesus and fellowship and all of this, uh, business started going down uh, for the people that were trying to promote these beliefs that were not God. So people were really angry. Actually, they, they put, up a, uh, put up a fight, really, a, a, how do you call that, a rattle? Um, a, riot. a riot. Thank you. That's exactly the right word. Uh, they put up a riot to try to kill him, so he had to actually flee. So it's very interesting to know he's writing all of these things uh, in, in the letter to them, saying like, yo, we're all in this together. God has called you to be a family, you know. Jesus has redeemed you, and we are going to do this united. Yeah, they almost kill him, uh, but uh, the church grew stronger. Because when there is unity based in Christ, there is growth and there is moving forward. So the church started growing stronger. So he starts writing this, this incredible letter just saying, hey, we're all together. We're, we're part of, we're, we're citizens of heaven, of the kingdom of God. What a reminder. You're not alone in this. It might be rough in your surroundings. Maybe there's riots around your faith. But you know what? We're in it together. Thanks to Christ, the cornerstone of this beautiful beautiful story his story that we're part of and um you know all about belonging right like definitely the message of paul here in, to the church in ephesus is like you belong somewhere can you say that to the person next to you you belong somewhere so i want to ask you your, your experience what what is this verse telling you like these verses what's standing up the most what what's what's maybe challenge you the most but these are some rich verses that we like to talk about that so i don't know who would like to yeah, so um, something that I read that really it, it made me think, because it says, build together into a dwelling. So the word build means work, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's you, you said it, um, you're not alone going through this process, but sometimes we say this to the youth all the time, but I think it can go through any stages of our life, um, whether you're an adult, whatever. Um, it can feel like you're walking through it alone at times, right? Because sometimes um, other people might not have the same beliefs as you. They might not be going through the same journeys as you. So you're just like, I am by myself. But I think that when you understand that you belong and there's a place called home and that's with Jesus and that you surround yourself with other people that have the same mindset, your walk with God changes your walk with come becomes sweeter because, um, and I mean, I can relate that so much because um, when, like I mentioned, there was a time in, in uh, when I was like in college that I, I really, when I, when I quit my job at church, when I got a little disconnected with, um, in, in my walk with God and started surrounding myself with different people, there were two constants in my walk with God and that was um, Pastor Alfredo and Steph. And um, there was always a sense of belonging when I came to them. And we wouldn't talk all the time. But whenever I would talk to Steph, whenever Steph would send me that like word-filled message or that situation I was going through, she does that, or writes you that letter, she would always connect me back home, right? And I think that she would always remind me where I belonged. And, and not just her, there were certain people that would do that to me. And I see how I do that now to other people, right? Um, so I think that belonging is something that you understand, but you understand that you can't do it alone, right? And you have to connect with others. And I think that it's really hard sometimes as adults because I can focus so much on what goes on in my house. I can just be like, hey, I got a, I got a, I got a 10 month old that's always hungry and strong and walking around. And I have a husband and I have a five year old and I have a job and I have this and that. So it's so easy to disconnect to the people that are in the journey with you. But um, it's so important to be intentional and say, okay, you and I, we, we believe this and we're on this journey together. So it's important that we connect and we remind each other of where we belong because yeah, we need to dwell, we need to build. Um, and the word built itself, it's not an easy word because built takes work. It means that you have to go do it. You have to put work into it. You can't just sit here and like, God is going to call me when I'm feeling down. No, 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 no. 
because I know I belong and I know she belongs and we're under the same family, the same home, this is someone I can reach to. So who do you belong with is the question, right? That we have to ask ourselves. Who, who, who are the, and, and it's funny because Eric and I were having this conversation on Friday, like, yeah, like, who, like you, you have your friends that might not be going to the same places as you and doing the same things as you, but you always have to find someone you connect with in your walk, in your journey, in your service. It's so important because you're dwelling and building together. There's going to be a certain connection that you're going to have with those people that are sitting in this space that you might not have with other people that might have your same beliefs. But you're dwelling and you're building here. So you have to ask yourself, who am I dwelling and building? Who am I, um, who am I, oh my God, I forgot the word, who am I belonging with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's, that's so important. That's good. Yeah. Um, before I hear you, Catherine, I, one thing that really pops out and, and, and it's, it's, it's the word cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And I know the concept of fellowship might be clear for you, maybe not. But I think some of you, and this is a reminder for myself as well, we cannot forget what's the center of it. Why and who are we sitting here for? The cornerstone, the center of this journey of fellowship is Jesus. It is him, amen? amen. You're sitting here today because of Jesus. And you have the people behind you, next to you, in front of you, because of Jesus. He's the cornerstone. It is in Him the foundation of our faith. He puts us together. He calls us to fellowship. It's in Him that we dwell first. And I think this is so critical for us to understand because we, as Nanda was saying, we can lose it so quick, our north we can lose this so quick and we forget what Jesus has done first individually and then as a whole, as a community that we are. And I love that. And he pops out cornerstone like he pokes your eyes like, whoa, <laughs> remember that why we're here has a name and he's Jesus. And that's why we do what we do. Catherine, what, what, what's your take on this, this verse? Wow, it's so rich. <laughs> but I love the part when he says that we're no longer strangers and aliens. I wow, didn't check yeah. into that word, but definitely we're not somebody from other world. <laughs> we were created with a purpose. We were created, and I believe that it says when he mentions about Christ being the cor cornerstone, I think he's talking that Christ brought to us the gift of belonging. Yeah, I mean, nobody can do life alone. I mean, think for a moment, you alone, I mean, no, nobody would <laughs> succeed being a baby and not having somebody to feed you. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you, you we come to this world totally being 100% dependent, and then we grow, and the idea is that we build relationships that are part of that belonging. Yeah. And I thought about that word, belonging, it's a longing to be. And I do believe that belonging it's not only in the action that he mentions, and it's fantastic to build the dwelling that we need to build together, but it's also to be, to become. And it's more important to know what we're becoming than what we are right now. So belonging, we need others to be able to belong, to be a part of. And until being a part of is something that makes you vulnerable. Because it makes you, if you're true to yourself and true to others, other people are going to know who you really are, are going to be able to know your weaknesses, are going to be able to know your flaws, but they're there to reach, extend their hand and reach. And we are all different. We all have different qualities and different, something that is good for somebody, is difficult for somebody else. And the gift of belonging allow us to sort of exchange your gifts. And my gifts are gonna be benefit Mary God. And my gifts are gonna be benefit anybody that is here. So when you really receive the gift from Christ, from the cornerstone, I believe that you become so much more richer because it's not just what you and God gave you as a person, it's what he gave you to the crew, yeah. to everybody that you, that you do life with. And that's how it works in families, and that's how it should work here in church and community. So I think that's something that it's food for thought, I guess. <laughs> I think it is, uh, 100%. Um, you know, you, you mentioned 
is is you are you set intentionality uh you you're going that same route too is longing to 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 be right uh i think that there are things that stand up against those things in our lives like if god's plan for our lives is to worship always. him and to have fellowship with others there's always going to be things around us that come against that reality and we live in such an individual in, in individualism culture like it's crazy it's all about me right there's a whole generation called like that, you know, Gen Z, no, millennials, there you are. Hey, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about, you know, it, there, there's like this, this story behind that. But I think God wanna, wants to help us to break that individualism. Yeah. Respect yeah. who we are. Uh, Brene Brown says that the beginning or the birth of belonging uh, is understanding myself. Like it is, it is, uh, uh, um, when you're vulnerable. Vulnerability is the birth of belonging because if I'm not showing myself to you who, who I really am with all of it, then I'm not really there. Yeah. Um, you know, but there are things that come against this vulnerability. There are things that come. What are some of the enemies? And I think this is important before we go into probably the way that, that, that are like, like steps for us to be able to have proper fellowship of belonging. What are some of the enemies that comes against fellowship of belonging? I think the fact that we're human and we're full of feelings and emotions and hurts and um, it's it's a sensitive time right now. <laughs> like even in, in in just like the way we're we're shifted to react and we're we're told to feel and how um, go for even you know it could be at work at school the way that just our environments are created that is there's one winner right so it's never like how do we win together how do we grow together and. Um, you know, when I think when we're not vulnerable, right, and we're not our true selves, it's so easy for things to offend us because then people can tell us something because they don't know our true self, they don't know what we're going through, and we're just going to take it in a whole other way. So I think that if we're not vulnerable and our relationships are built on what you perceive of me and I perceive of you, that's a big, that's a big red flag because we're not being built in honesty. And I think that's the definition of how the devil likes to work, right? In the dark, through machining, through everything. Um, so I think that our biggest obstacle in that it's, it's, it's just not being honest with ourselves and then not having the ability to say, okay, let me take a step back um, of why I'm feeling this way and really evaluating how we feel and speaking truth into that and reaching out for help. I think that, that that's our, our, our biggest thing, just being able to like, okay, understanding we're not being vulnerable by me, might be the first step, but then coming and telling ourselves, I need help, I need to be honest, I need to go and like reach out. Yeah. I think that we, we've come, we live in a society that it's all about just go, keep going. You feel that way? No, 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 you don't feel that way, just keep going, you know? Oh, you don't like that? Deal with it, keep going. Oh, that hurts you, it doesn't matter, keep going. And we never really stop. Um, on, on Friday, I was telling, I was giving a worship and I was telling the girls, I'm like, it's so important that you sit back and you ask yourself, how do I feel? How does this make me feel? How, do I like this? Am I learning anything from this? Am I, am I, is this making me feel good or bad? And I think that not understanding ourselves and not understanding our feelings, it's, it's, it's a really big obstacle in belonging. Because if we can be honest with ourselves, how can we expect to build? How can we expect for others to get to know us, right? So I think that's, that's the biggest obstacle that I see. Absolutely. You know, I was taught that vulnerability is weakness. Yep. I don't know if anybody was taught like that, uh, but I think one, one of the biggest lies, especially in, in our culture as men, I talk to you men right now, if you think vulnerability is weakness, you might want to double consider your relationships right now and maybe where you stand today because vulnerability is needed for fellowship. There's no other way. And, and, and I was taught like emotions, that's for girls. That's what I was taught. I was brought up like that. As if like men don't have emotions, bro. We do, and we are terrible at managing them and coping with them and dealing with them and embracing them, which I believe that's what we have to do. I don't see Jesus not embracing his emotions. Completely the opposite. 
I see Jesus embracing his emotions to the point of sweating blood at the garden. He was embracing his emotions. And I think that we need to break that stuff in our culture. I really believe that as, as, a, as a family. That, that's, I open up a, a, a group for guys <laughs> that like coffee. <laughs> Come on, fellowship of belonging. <laughs> we got to belong. And we do Christ and coffee. Hello. <laughs> that will preach all day here, okay? Christ and coffee. And we sit down around the table. Very simple. Very clear. To talk about coffee and coffee history. We learn about coffee history 101 this week. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing what you learn. But then we talk about Christ and talk to, you know, we're learning how to be Christ-like men, a group. We, we've met for two in, our, in, in my interest group, the coffee club interest group for young adult guys. Anyhow, you know what we talked about this, this past Thursday? We talked about anger. You're like, what you mean? Yeah. We talked about anger and the effect of anger in our lives and in our fellowship and how anger affects us, affect us. And how Jesus dealt with anger. Come on. Mm. And there at the table, having fellowship with coffee. Let's go. Good coffee. <laughs> because life Better is too me. short for bad coffee. Yes. Yeah. May the conviction of the Holy Spirit get inside of you right now. <laughs> Holy Ghost show up today <laughs> but i don't know there's and i'm saying this because maybe god wants to speak to you men in that re, in, in that regards vulnerability it's key because it is the foundation of belonging and it is not weakness i believe it shows the work of god in us Amen. because we can be open and say this is how i'm feeling man Catherine, some of the enemies, I know God spoke to you about this, and I want you to get it right in it. Okay, well, enemies of belonging, um, definitely the wrong mindset. And more than the wrong mindset is a rigid mindset. I believe uh, there's all kinds of personalities, and definitely uh, our experiences sometimes shape us in different ways and make us not want to be vulnerable and and be honest and be truth. But um, I guess um, that was one of the problems that I had. My, when I usually said, I'm not stubborn. Just prove me wrong and I believe what you're saying. <laughs> and, and little did, did I know that I was developing a rigid mindset. And I look at the definition of mindset in the dictionary and it says, it blew me away. It says, the established set of attitudes held by someone. I said, attitudes? So it has to do not, I thought it was thoughts or something like that, a structure, mind, all of that. No, it has to do with the attitude that I have, and, and it's amazing. But one of the things, my favorite things when I'm studying the Word of God is look at nature. And I started asking the Holy Spirit, I said, how could a rigid mindset affect my sense of belonging or my togetherness of belonging to community. And then he immediately brought like an earthquake, like natural, natural disasters. Because when, they're, when a building is too rigid, an earthquake will knock it down. And everybody in the middle. And what they do for the buildings that are, were built, like in 1951, half of San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake. So what they built afterward, they started singing, what, thinking, what do they need to do to build structures that will not, that will withstand earthquake and other natural disasters? Like here in Florida, there are coats and all of that. And it's amazing because what they put to the buildings is the cement is too rigid. So they add what they call shock absorbers that can hold the energy that is produced from nature when there's a disaster and that makes it malleable it means that when that something comes even though it's a structure that is solid in foundation it can be moved it can be shaped without breaking and i was like oh i didn't have anything else to say i said lord please make me flexible that when the Holy Spirit wants to bring different ways of doing church, 
that when the Holy Spirit wants to bring younger generations doing things different than the way that we're used to doing. What is your mindset? What is my mindset? Sometimes we go like, really? That's not the way it's supposed to be. And as long as the foundation, as long as Christ is the cornerstone, as long as he is the word, the truth, God doesn't change, the word doesn't change, but the form can change. The form can adapt so that we can reach more. Yeah. One of the things that I was thinking, the other thing that they do, another method that they use to withstand earthquake is to find and to add to the, so to the soil so that when it moves, what it helps move is the soil. And the Holy Spirit showed me my heart and said, your heart, because in Colossians, there, there was another, and we don't have time for that, but it says, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Forgive as you have been forgiving. On all of this, virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. The only way we can belong is through unity. And anything other than that, it will divide us. And we are, let me just say this, we are in community, 30 nationalities, how many different cultures, how many different languages, but we are one. We are one. So, that's it. She's like, we got no time for the verse. Let me just read the whole thing. <laughs> she just closed up the teaching. Thank you for coming. We love you. <laughs> uh, no, it's crazy because uh, it's, it's awesome how to see. You see the enemies coming towards our fellowship. Absolutely. But then you see how the Bible is asking us to react towards that. And how should we be about our fellowship? And Catherine just read it. It's, it's just incredible. This is in Colossians, if you want. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, and four, uh, 12, 13, and 14. Also written by Paul. Guess what? Same time as Ephesians, same place. He was also in jail at that moment, at that time. And I love the fact that he brings things out like clothe yourself. He says that, clothe yourself. Like put on this stuff. And then he says, put on compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and put on patience now that's the reality relationships are simply not easy period anybody says amen but it's not about being easy we understand that but we have these relationships that god has placed around us that we need to build on that we need to work on by sharing but then we have this beautiful space called our local church our home where God has placed us under the same kingdom, yeah. under the same foundation, the same cornerstone that is Jesus. And you and I have an opportunity. Literally, I don't know how you see Sundays. I don't know how you see any other meeting that we do in gather. That's just opportunities for fellowship. That's really what it is. Like, think about this. We have the same goal in mind is Jesus. Our vision here at Community is to live God's way. All right, that is Jesus. There are other local churches that have other visions, but if you see those visions with, with the right eyesight from the Word of God and God's story, not ours, it's the same thing. It's Jesus. It's the pursuit of Jesus. And that's the beauty of the local church, of belonging to a community like this one. Now, all gather here. What an opportunity Sunday by Sunday to have fellowship. If, if, if you're in a group, we, we, maybe you don't go to a group. Maybe you want to open a group. Well, that's one of our action steps, action calls to you. If you want to open an interest group, just at the end, I'll be right here. Come and talk to me. You don't need much. You just need an interest, like coffee. <laughs> and we just have cafecito. Good coffee, though. Please, let's not start. Don't get me started. Put the video. Of, no, kidding. No, whatever. <laughs> Not all coffees you are need, the same. No, we no, just no, say no. that. Uh, I'll give you that. But in that table, there's fellowship happening. I'm opening the house, my house. I'm opening my, but I could do it at a coffee shop. It doesn't really matter. But it's me saying, I want to belong. I want to belong. I, I'm here. And it goes beyond religion and getting here on Sunday just to clock in and clock out. There is life in fellowship. 
There is Christ life in fellowship. Amen. You know, Kata and I bump heads a lot. <laughs> Till this day. She's the admin. What do you expect? I'm a youth pastor. It's just naturally inclined to bump heads. But I remember at the beginning. Oh gosh, guys. Oh, well, she was here too. So, you know, toxic dynamic. Anyways, but... Uh, was and, I that job? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want to say this. I love yeah. Catherine and, and our relationship is incredible. She's my friend and, and Steph's friend. And, and it is interesting because I think Catherine had a rigid mind. Hey, yo, chill, man. Like, I haven't even finished yet. Yeah, she's going. But I had two. So there was no fellowship because we had allowed this rigid mind, this, this lack of flexibility to just bum heads and bum heads and bum heads. How much we do that with people in our lives. You know, the foundation of that is pride. And pride goes against unity. Pride's from the devil, unity is from Jesus, literally to put it as clear as it is. And be, the Bible says that before the fall comes the pride, comes pride, right? And, and, and pride's not gonna lead us nowhere. But unity can lead us somewhere. And, and I remember building our relationship little by little with Mary, too. We got stories. We don't have time for that today, but there's a lot of stories out there. Uh, uh, the C-section one with Steph, do you remember that one? The one with the... <laughs> We're not talking about it today. Anyways, but uh, I remember that little by little, I think that the Jesus working in us start working such a great relationship. Like, I have... There's friendship here. We are family here. Mary uh, and, and, and Leo, they, 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 she, she said she took a break, right? In the middle of that break, we got them married. We had the opportunity and the beauty of getting them married because we never ended the fellowship. Yeah. See, I don't know why we burn the bridges of relationships so often. Yeah. And I, I don't believe, and that's a philosophy that I live based on the Word of God, based on Jesus. If he's not Judas, don't burn it. Because Judas burned himself. The relationships are not supposed to be in your life. It, I understand that. But the other relationships, most of the relationships are like bridges. We're called to build them, not to burn them. I believe with all my heart. But there's a foundation to it, which is the understanding of belonging to something. We belong to Christ foremost. She, was, she, she went to another church. That's okay. But we still belong to Christ. So why burn the relationship? And then she came back home. That's amazing. Some of them make home of another local. That's, a, that's great too. But don't burn the bridges of the relationships that God has placed in your life. Keep building them through the fellowship of sharing, level one, and level two of belonging. Because we belong to the same family. Amen. Do you receive that word today?